muy bien, bienvenidos a lo prometido, la entrevista con estos dos grandes músicos. Tengo a mi lado a, a Kurt, que acabo de escuchar dos, dos de sus canciones, una en YouTube y otra, las dos en YouTube. Y me quedé perplejo de la, la música que estaba escuchando, lo que canta Kurt, obviamente acá con Phil, pero... Increíble, increíble. Dije, esa es la música que él, él me entiende. I told him. Le dije a él en, eh, antes de la, de la entrevista. Y acá al lado mío tengo nada más y nada menos que Phil. Eh, todos lo conocen por Bon Jovi, pero él estuvo en Frozen Ghost, estuvo en Triumph, en su banda Powder. Tocó para Tommy Lee, para Rob Zombie, eh, me lo tuve que anotar. Para Daughtry, Aldo Nova, Adam Lambert, Hellstorm y Cinedex. Wow. Cinedex. Yeah. I don't have anything about Cinedex. So I, wanna, I was 17. You, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> you forget. Okay. It's a long time ago. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm, I'm really, so happy really to. Really yeah. I, I mean, before listening to your music, I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do an interview. And then you agreed to do it before listening. Before listening. Really? Yeah. Because I am journalist. You know, I'm, my work well, is, good. you know. Yeah. And they, but, but I love music. Well, I love music, and and when I listened the first time, I was like, "Hey, wait, wait a minute!" I mean, I, this is just not any any other interview. And then I said, I, I listened the second one, which was a video clip. Yeah, and I was like, "Okay, that's it. That's it." I fell in love cool. of your music. Not well, thank you. Yeah, not you because you you know my type. Okay. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't stop in the fifth thing because the, yeah, yeah. it's a humor. <laughs> <laughs> So, Kurt, tell me about the, the EP, uh, Work Hard, Rock Hard, what, what people can expect. Uh, work Hard, Rock Hard, we put it out uh, last November of 2021. It's our uh, debut release um, of Kurt Dimer. Uh, Bill and I uh, started writing together probably a few months before we put the EP out, and, and there were some songs that I had already written prior to that that made it on the EP as well, but uh, once Phil and I got together, um, we wrote uh, Back of the School was the first song we wrote, which you'll find on the EP, um, and it tells the tale of the mean internet troll and how people need to quit being so mean to each other on the internet. Then we wrote Only Time Will Tell, which everything in your life that happens to you you never know what it could be which what what is going to be next only time will tell mm. and then we just filled out that album with some uh, other great tunes and uh, it was our first debut release and then we toured along with that uh, release along with jeff tate from uh, yes the former front man of Queensryche, who's featured in a song on the album called burn together which actually did pretty well here in America on the charts that cracked into the top 40 of rock, of rock charts I think the mid 20s so oh nice nice yeah one. so it did, it did very well and you'll see that on there as well I mean that song is on there as well so bueno abreviando un poquito en español eh, la sacaron en noviembre del año pasado tenía varias canciones ya eh, armadas algunas donde participa Phil y bueno pusieron un EP con cinco temas eh, y grabaron un par de videos en una de, los, de las canciones aparece como invitado Jeff Tate de Queensryche, y bueno, ahora justamente lo, lo voy a preguntar, porque le pregunté acerca de, de qué puede esperar la gente de este disco, ¿no? que, que, que sacaron. Y le voy a preguntar ahora cómo, cómo coincidió dar con Jeff. ¿Cómo te you con Jeff en Jeff in, in working for you? Well, that was, uh, once uh, I came out here with my demo, I, I uh, taken it to Chris Lord Algae. Chris Lord Algae decided, or I guess what you would say discovered me, if you will, And then he brought Phil X and I together to uh, do the uh, cover of the Pink Floyd song, Have a Cigar. So we met on the set of that. You'll see the video on YouTube of Have a Cigar. So when all that's going on, by the time um, I had gotten back from uh, a tour earlier that year that I'd done under my old name, my management, uh, uh, my management Andy Gould, is my manager and Paul Gargano co-manages with Andy. Paul has a good relationship and is friends with Jeff Tate and his wife Susan and the Queens right or he's not in Queens right now, but the mm -hmm. Tate camp. And uh, we arranged a meeting in LA and Jeff Tate flew down and, along with his camp and we met for dinner and we agreed to do a, a music video together. 
I picked Burn Together to showcase my voice versus Jeff Tate's, you know, kind of was a good song to differentiate the two styles. And then we agreed to do a tour, and we did the tour and support yeah, Walker, yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's how it all came together through my management, Andy Gould and Paul Gargano. Eh, lo que lo que dijo es que a través de su compañía de manejo, sus managers, eh, que con, lo contactaron con, con la gente de Queensrÿche, con Jeff, y así fue básicamente como como logró traerlo a, a tocar y después terminaron no solo haciendo la canción juntos, sino haciendo Haciendo la gira eh, de soporte para, para Jeff Tate. Nothing is private, no landline in the room, secrets are hacked, wait, it'll all be over soon. Double down, you don't have to believe, can't let it break you. Eh, le voy a preguntar cómo se conocieron. Bueno, él dijo a través del manager, pero cómo, cómo él accedió a, a, a tocar con, con Kurt. How did you end up playing for Kurt? I mean, I know how he knew you, but how, why did you decide to? Um, I'm going to keep this short because you got to translate everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Um, no, you know, to be honest, I, I played, I've recorded with so many artists and I've recorded uh, my bands and other bands and I uh, toured with other bands. And, uh, you know, I was looking for something that was different than anything else I was doing. So when Chris sent me um, Have a Cigar and I heard Kurt's voice and I was like, wow, you know, this is really unique. And it's hard to really jump on something that has a unique quality these days because it, it feels like everything's been done and it feels like everybody's starting to copycat each other and I wanted to do something that nobody could copy and I don't think anybody could do what Kurt does and then when we joined forces it was just making his music sound better but then when we started writing obviously I had more invested in the project and then when he was like man you got to come on the road I was like yeah I think I do <laughs> so it was kind of like that bueno eh, eh, lo, cuando lo presentaron obviamente él quería eh, no volver a hacer eh, todo está ya hecho y prácticamente la gente se termina prácticamente lo repito copiando unos a otros y él quería algo un poquito más original entonces de alguna manera cuando escuchó la música de él dijo oh, bueno Sé que voy a poder aportar algo, pero cuando se pusieron a componer, ahí es como que la magia realmente apareció y pudieron hacer cosas mucho más eh, 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 creativas, por decirlo de alguna manera. Phil, um, I have a couple of uh, questions about Bon Jovi, so we don't, we don't need, Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to be a cliché, but I have to be a cliché. Yeah, yeah. So, um, one of the things that I want to know is uh, how was the moment that you made the audition to be part of Bon Jovi? I didn't audition. I mean, when, when you started, yeah, when, when you, mean, you just call. showed up and well, you were the, the guy with I mean, it. okay, so I got the call to maybe, maybe fill in for Richie Sambora. And then when he went into rehab, maybe became, you're playing on Saturday. And it was 50,000 people, jazz fest in New Orleans. And I basically walked on, you mean, people say, we asked me if I was nervous, but I didn't have time to be nervous. See, I walk on stage, my mentality is, you've been playing and singing your whole life. It's just Bon Jovi songs. You got this. Let's go do it. So, and that's exactly what I did. Because anything, any other thought would have tripped me up and it would have sent me home. But that didn't happen. So, it was, it was pretty amazing. It's an amazing feeling. They have an incredible fan base. Yeah. Like, they go to, it's not unusual to see 
the same face in the front row for like 20 shows in a row. I mean, I don't know. I like, did you sell your house? Like, what the hell? <laughs> bueno, lo que dijo es que lo llamaron, le dijeron que tal vez iba a reemplazar a Richie, que tal vez iba a tocar y de repente lo llamaron y que el sábado ya tenía que tocar para 50.000 personas en New Orleans. Y él, la verdad, ni siquiera tuvo tiempo de, de ponerse nervioso porque él canta ya hace años que tiene tocando y bueno, lo agarró y empezó a tocar y encima canciones con Joey que son conocidas, no es algo realmente novedoso como para sacarlas. Eh, Juan me, bueno, le voy a preguntar por qué, por qué lo hicieron como miembro ya completo, full member y, y con un tiempo estaba como detrás de, de, de eso. What made them to make you full member, you and Hugh? It's funny because actually it was, it was, it's kind of funny it's like john came up to me one day and he goes you know you can't really be a, a rock band with a singer a drummer and a piano player so maybe maybe you know you should be the guitar player and then we'll get you to be the bass player and we'll be the, the band and i thought well I, i think that's a pretty good idea but you know john is like uh he loves the drills you know he, he he's, he's very supportive of whatever i do and then the last thing that i did was uh, a private um in nashville in may in the middle of our tour yeah. and he goes are you playing tomorrow i'm like i am he goes have fun, <laughs> have fun. he's just it's very very like man this is what you do you play music man and then there's i know you're happy with a guitar in your hands bless you that's amazing yeah it's really amazing yeah bueno eh, el tema es que en un momento se le acercó a él y dijo mira eh, es medio extraño estar en una banda donde hay un cantante, un tecladista y un baterista. Entonces le terminó diciendo, bueno, ¿quieres formar parte de la banda? Un poco redundante porque él ya estaba tocando en Bon Jovi. Y siempre bon Jovi, eh, John lo, lo, ha, lo ha apoyado a él en todo lo que hizo. A él le encanta tocar, tiene un montón de bandas, su banda Powder, los de, de Thrills y todo eso. Todas sus bandas y, y John siempre lo estuvo apoyando ahí para que él toque. Y contó una anécdota, pero la verdad ni la entendí, así que... Ahora le voy a preguntar un poquito cómo describiría a John. How will you describe John? Well, he's my boss. Be careful what you say. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's he's a very generous, giving person, and uh, when he lets his guard down and you're just having lunch, you're laughing like you're, you're hanging out with a regular buddy, yeah. a normal dude. He's a, he's a really normal dude, but you know sometimes he can be in a bubble because he's one of the biggest rock stars in the world, right? Yeah. But uh, I don't, I never complain about the that. The most uh, important characteristic from, from Joe, the thing that you say, oh, I love this from you. Wait, say that one more. The, the, something that you love from him, so from his personality. Oh man, he's, like, it, like I said, if, if, you, if you're in a situation where you're like having lunch at the hotel before a soundtrack, He's just a normal dude, and I love that about him. And you're laughing, and he's cracking jokes, and you're cracking jokes, and he's laughing at your jokes, mm -hmm. and it's just, uh, it's an amazing, but then he, you know, he's like, dude, whatever you want to do, whatever you need, you need anything from me ever, you just call. Wow. And he's that guy, you know, and it's, it's an amazing, he's an amazing friend to have, for sure. Como dije, eh, la verdad de una vez que estás dentro de la burbuja, eh, es un tipo normal, eh, se ríe de tus bromas, te hace bromas, te trata de igual a igual y encima lo reitera, siempre lo ha, le dijo, siempre que me necesites me llamás y voy a estar para vos. Eh, le voy a preguntar un poquito cómo le impactó a él la, la muerte de, de Alec. Eh, how did you impact, where were you when Alec John Such passed away? Um, I, I was in my kitchen and my wife walked in and she told me and I only met him twice, no three times, once back in 1990 at John's house and then back uh, and then we, we played the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame together so we hung out then and he was really cool. I mean, I didn't feel like a great loss for me other than him being an original member of the band and me being a fan of the original lineup but you know, I'm the guy I hit all my boys, you know, I go hit Tico and, and, and Hugh and David and John and say, hey man, I'm, I'm sorry you guys lost your brother, my heart goes out to your family, this kind of thing, you know, it's, yeah. losing anybody is yeah. really tough, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mira, eh, bueno, él estaba en la cocina cuando pasó, le dijo la esposa y bueno, él lo, lo conoció un par de veces en los 90 cuando era un fanático 
y después cuando se reunieron para el, el, la fama, el salón de la fama, y bueno, simplemente llamó a los muchachos y le dijo que mi corazón está con ustedes y les dio un apoyo, es, cuando, es lo mismo que cuando se muere cualquier persona. Le voy a preguntar cómo lo puedo ubicar a él, how people can reach you. Well, the best way is to go to Kurt Dimer, K-U-R-T-D-E-I-M-E-R.com. Uh, you'll find all our links to also Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, subscribe, follow us all there. It's all just under my name. It's simple, Kurt Dimer. And, tw and Twitter, um, stream us on Spotify, Apple, or however, however else you stream your music. And it's all under my name. Kurt Daimer, so. Fácil, Kurt Daimer, ok, Daimer en español para que lo entiendan, D-E, ok, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 ahí todo, todo lo que es social media, ok, lo pueden ubicar, y Phil, uh, any, anything else you want to say to your fans? Yeah, man, I mean, uh, I think uh, the way the fans work is just an amazing thing, and uh, I got... I feel like when I started playing with Bon Jovi, I got a lot of the Bon Jovi fans that just became Phil X fans. And these are the fans that follow my other band, The Drills. And these are the fans that follow Kurt now. And I just feel like it's a family. And I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, like we'll be, we were playing with Ingve in May. And we, we got to Cleveland and there was like 12 Bon Jovi fans there. And they came to see us. So, I mean, it, and this it, it, like a stadium. Yeah. You know, well, it's, you know, it's really cool. He's got a lot of loyal followers and they've all embraced us in our music and they truly love it and they share it. And I appreciate all of them very much. So. Yeah. Bueno, y los fanáticos de Bon Jovi que lo han seguido a él por estar dentro de la banda y, y por consecuencia también todo lo que hizo él con, con los The Trills, con, con Kurt, y bueno, de hecho dijo que estaban tocando, abriendo para, para In By Mastin, y vinieron 12, 12 fanáticos de Bon Jovi que volaron solo para verlos a ellos, y eso es algo que siempre le voy a estar agradecido. Y él completó eso más o menos, ¿no? de que es fantástico que lo sigan también. Así que bueno, voy a ir despidiendo. Guys, thank oh, you. Yes. And the new record is going to be kick ass. We don't know oh. when it's coming out, right? Right. We don't know when it's coming out, but some of the songs on this record are ridiculous. They're crazy. I'm very proud of what we're doing. I had to throw that in there. And we always will be who we are. That, that's we're gonna fight. Except on Sunday. He's a really <laughs> weird dude. I'm really weird. <laughs> oh. And I'm really, What's that? And I get really... Get it and I get really... Well, I just... When I, I'm like this all the time. I'm very quiet. Sometimes feels like, can you speak up, please? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay, and then I have to use my projection in my voice, which Phil reminds me of. But when I get on stage, I'm totally different than I am right now. Or when you see my movie and I get in front of the camera, you're going to go, whoa, what happened to Kurt? <laughs> Where did he go? He's got a few characters in his pocket. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. yeah I got some characters in my pocket. So. <laughs> and we can't wait to get down to South America and jam. You are the Barry White White. Well, we might do a Barry White cover sometime. Oh. What do you think, Phil? Yeah. 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 I, I can't even do it. Yeah. I can't even do it. Well, well, they've been wanting me to do an app or uh, get on OnlyFans, not because of my looks or anything, but get on there and I can be the voice that says goodnight oh. to the ladies, you know. Yeah, I think they you were doing, you were like, wife, you were like, I go, goodnight, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I think like when, when the kids call Santa Claus yeah. at Christmas time. <laughs> yeah, send me what you want me to read, I'll read it off to you, so. No, lot, lot, lots of good stuff coming, man. And yeah. we, we can't wait to uh, jam all over the world for people. So we're just going to keep building it and build the family, like Phil said, and uh, just do it one person at a time. So awesome, awesome. Appreciate you having us, man. Escuchen, escuchen el disco, okay? Thank you, and and thank you, and hey, wait, 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 thank, thank you, bro. You have to translate, and I don't remember anything. Yeah, now. You gotta tell them what that is. <laughs> Right. Bueno, a ver, a ver, a ver, let me see, uh, que el disco, o okay, que el disco va a estar muy bueno, que Kurt es una persona normal, salvo los domingos, porque no sé qué le hablan de la voz esa voz, así todo tipo Barry White, muy sexy, muy así, como que, oh, oh, ay mamita, o sea, a ver, sí, ay mamita, ay mamita, 
You got it. You got the gig. <laughs> okay, we're gonna open a hotline, okay, for ladies and, and yeah. some guys, maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and and credit's gonna be your or voice over uh, main guy. Whatever, w. whatever anybody needs. <laughs> okay. I gotta do a cameo tonight, so whatever you need. Lo que necesitemos. Bueno, gracias. Ahí seguimos nomás. Nos vamos. Adiós. Bye.